in one minute. So, good afternoon to everybody. The first of all, thanks again for attending this new webinar following our series of small fields of knowledge according to our commitment to sharing knowledge. Let me to introduce myself and my company again for the new attendants who do not listen the last webinar. My name is Juan Moreno Cid. I'm a bioprocess specialist and the pilot plant manager at Bionet. I'm holding a PhD in biotechnology with a background in fermentation technology at different levels, science lab and pilot plant scale as head of bioprocess development up to large scale as the technical manager in agri-food areas. At Bionet, we are, we are manufacturer of laboratory, pilot and industrial equipment and software focused to bioreactor fermenters, transition for filtration, as well as complete bioproduction plants, in which we integrate our proprietary equipment with technologies from other leading vendors, like centrifuges or homogenizers. Briefly, the content of the webinar will be divided into an introduction, a brief explanation of the different types of continuous bioprocessing strategies, the explanation of the turbido state strategy, principles, control of bioreactor volume, advantages and disadvantages, conclusions, and finally a time for questions in the platform to which we will try to reply immediately or by email after the webinar. Let's start with the introduction. Continuous fermentation is a process with a constant flow of culture medium through the bioreactor. The volume in a continuous fermentation is usually constant. The concept of continuous fermentation processes is closely linked to the chemostat, where one nutrient is growth limiting and used to determine the growth rate. However, there are several other less common ways by which a continuous fermentation can be controlled. In the next section, I will explain all different modes for continuous bioprocessing to later on focus on to be the start in the third part of this webinar. For all strategies, continuous fermentation starts as a batch process. At a certain point, for example, when the culture reaches the exponential growth phase or when the culture becomes substrate limited, a fifth with fresh growth medium is started and an equal volume of culture is brought is removed. Continuous fermentation is a superior tool in research, but the number of industrial applications sometimes is limited due to some process or technical restrictions. Therefore, for a continuous fermentation process is considered an open system, where the medium removed from the culture is continuously replaced by a fresh media at an identical flow rate. Thus, the medium and cells are continuously changing, maintaining the population constant. In a continuous fermentation process, the system must reach a steady state growth. Now, I will explain briefly the different types of continuous bioprocessing strategies. There are three main types of continuous cultures chemostat, turbidostat, and oxostat. Besides these main strategies, we can find a variation of these modes according to some special requirements of the process to apply, like perfusion, with a cell recycling, and a multi-stage when different phases of the growth are required. Chemostat. In a chemostat, the medium usually contains a growth-limiting substrate and the growth rate of the whole culture is afterward determined by the flow rate with which this limiting substrate is added. This allows for controlled variation in the specific growth rate of the cells. The advantage of the continuous bioreactor is that a steady state can be achieved, which allows for precise experimental determination of a specific rates. To be the start. In a turbido state, the nutrient supply is painful and the organism grows at its maximum specific growth rate, thus maintaining a constant concentration of biomass through whole fermentation, and the spent medium is removed. In a turbido state, the biomass cell density is used as a control parameter. 
A sensor detecting the biomass density gives a signal to a pump to add more medium when the biomass density rises above a chosen level. Using a turbido start control, the biomass density is set and the dilution rate adjusts itself to the steady state value, in contrast to the chemostat, in which the dilution rate is fixed and the biomass concentration adjusts itself to the steady state level. We will see thoroughly in the next section this operation mode being the main issue of this webinar. Auxostat. In an auxostat, the feeding rate is adjusted to match the rate according to the cellular metabolism. The most popular auxostat is the pH auxostat, a continuous culture in which pH is maintained at a set point by the addition of a basic solution to counterbalance discreted acidic byproducts. On the other hand, a useful strategy to apply an axostat with the basic configuration of a bioreactor will be the tip connecting the press media in one of the pumps controlled by the pH control loop, maintaining the desired pH in the maximum point or decided value of the specific growth rate of the exponential phase or using the dissolved oxygen cascade control loop, varying the flow rate of the addition of the press media according to the respiration of the microorganism. If your software and equipment allows this integration. Perfusion. Perfusion culture is a technique where ferment is connected in line with a filter and culture is withdrawn continuously from the vessel and passed through a filter like transcension tangential flow filtration technique. The filtered medium is pumped out to a permit reservoir and the cells are returned to the bioreactor at the same time that the fringe medium is added into the bioreactor. In some cases, the cells can be collected instead to be returned to the bioreactor to maintain a constant cell concentration in the bioreactor. This method is used for the removal of toxic compounds during the culture or the collection of target product if exists a risk of degradation in the culture and for microorganisms with a very low specific growth rate. Multi-stage. The multi-stage system is the application of the continuous mode in a sequence of cascade mode of stages. The two-stage continuous culture system shown in this figure can extend the range of application of continuous culture. For example, the first stage may be used to achieve stable conditions with a maximum growth rate, and the second stage may be used to extend the growth rate down to zero both of which conditions may be decided in certain cases, but are impossible in a simple state. The latter property is particularly useful when the substrate is also a growth inhibitor and for the production of secondary metabolites and enzymes by continuous culture. The second state may be used to provide a non-growing situation in which product formation occurs, like the poster you can find in, the, in our corner of knowledge by clicking in this link, where you will find a very interesting preliminary development of a multi-stage cascade process for the production of spores of bacillus cephalis in continuous mode. And now let's focus the content of the Turbido Stat strategy. As we saw briefly in the introduction, in a Turbido Stat, the feed medium contains all of requirement of required nutrients in excess. Growth is therefore not substrate limited at is in the chemostat, and the microorganism can grow at its maximum specific growth rate. The system can be controlled at the desired cell density by monitoring the turbidity, and therefore the biomass continuously. This can be achieved by measuring optical density using an online spectrophotometer. If the system detects a deviation from the cell density set point value, a signal is, the, is related to the controller and so the rate at which the feed medium is added to the bioreactor can be adjusted. When the turbidity increases above a set point, the feed rate is increased to dilute the culture and bring the turbidity back to its set point. If the density of the bioreactor population falls, the feed rate is decreased, allowing the population to grow until the turbidity set point is reached, thus avoiding the washout of the organism.
The torpedo stat is commonly used for the selection of strains and the degradation of toxic waste, where the nutrient limitation is not desirable. It's also routinely used to avoid the washout effects that are more common in chemostat system and to produce cells of approximately uniform morphology and composition over prolonged periods. Also for the reduction of turbidity in photobioreactors, where the, where the light must switch the cells. Therefore, we can summarize the principles to apply a turbido stat as the biomass, cell density, is used as a control parameter and the goal is to maintain the concentration constant according to the point at the maximum expected growth rate. Consider that the spent medium must be removed continuously, keeping the level of the culture constant with a low variation. Then the volume must be controlled. The specific growth rate of a continuous culture can be determined from the material balance for biomass. The net increase in biomass equals biomass in incoming medium plus growth minus outpost minus depth. In mathematical form, this is the equation, where this term is the rate of accumulation of biomass as dry cell weight per unit of time and volume. This first term is the biomass in the incoming medium, and the second term is the specific growth rate of for biomass formation, and X is the biomass concentration in the bioreactor. The third term is the biomass concentration at the outlet stream, and the last term is the specific depth rate of the cells. This expression can be simplified if one assumes that the tubular start is at a steady state that there are no cells in the incoming medium, and that cell length is negligible. The assumption of a steady state implies that there is no net accumulation of cells in the bioreactor, so the biomass concentration is constant. The factors and main parameters influencing the continuous operation are the dilution rate, which is the ratio of flow rate to the working volume. Resident time, which is the inverse of the dilution rate. Then the volume displaced into the flow rate is to say how long a molecule stays in the vessel. The steady state is rigid when the number of cells produced balance the number removed. It can typically take several residence times, three, five is the typical, before a culture reaches a steady state. And the specific growth rate. This example is shown how to calculate the dilution rate according to a specific growth rate that we want to reach or maintain. And then the flow rate of the first media we need to establish depending on the working volume in the bioreactor. The first media is introduced at this flow rate expressed in liters per hour and that the culture volume expressed in liters is kept constant by, con by continuous removal of the culture. In the case of a chemostat process, the dilution rate and the flow rate of the media addition is kept constant during the whole process, and usually the value selected is in the low range. But in the case of the turbidity stat, it's changing during the process according to keep the constant the turbidity close to the highest value of the specific growth rate. In principle, turbidity stat culture is suitable for the cultivation range in which the biomass concentration varies significantly with change in dilution rate, such as near to the critical dilution rate, as shown in the present figure. This is of particular interest because the operation near to the maximum growth rate can be very unstable in a chemostat. The turbidity stat also provides a means of maintaining cultures in a constant environment with an excess of substrate. Since the growth rate is not fixed, the system will select for fast growing strains and increasing in the maximum growth rate will result from both selection of genetically different organisms or mutants and the adaptation of cellular metabolism. According to the Monod equation, if the concentration of the limiting substrate is much higher than its constant, it follows that this term is very close to one, and hence the specific growth rate will be close to the maximum value. 
For each microorganism, there is a correlation between the optical density or turbidity in a given wavelength with the dry cell weight and then the biomass concentration. Thus, according to maintain a biomass concentration, it's necessary to know this correlation and then establish the set point of optical density to maintain the culture at this biomass concentration for the turbid start strategy. Therefore, to establish the conditions for the turbid start strategy and biomass concentration control, at least it's necessary to follow as basic steps the determination experimentally of the maximum specific growth rate to know the correlation between the optical density at different points of the growth in the exponential phase, determining the corresponding point to the maximum specific growth rate, and then establish the optical density or turbidity which we want to control according to a point near to the maximum specific growth rate. In the practice, it's convenient a value near the maximum around 70-80% because it's very difficult to maintain the culture completely at the maximum value for a long period. And now, and a key consideration, how we are going to control the volume in the bioreactor. Now we know the fundamentals to control the biomass concentration in the turbidity stat using a pump for the addition of the fresh media according to the turbidity, but it's necessary to have clear how we are going to control the volume in the bioreactor. In this sense, I'm going to explain to you some tips and strategies to control the level in the bioreactor. We can find different options with different prices, technologies, requirements, and precisions. Those are controlling the weight, a second pump operating with the same flow rate than the additional pump, or using a level sensor connected to a pump to withdraw the culture, or a simple overflow. This is a setup of an overflow in our lab with one of our benchtop scale bioreactors. This is the overflow, basically a height adjustable tube to establish the point where we want to control the volume. The green arrows show the inlet stream of the first of the first media, and the red arrows show the outlet stream. This will be the cheapest method compared to the others. The problem of the precision of this method is that the flow rate of the outlet stream is not constant. The culture usually gases out. In some cases, the level control in this way can be difficult to achieve in vigorously agitated fermenters due to the turbulence and bubbles generated, conducting in a non-homogeneous liquid stream at the outlet line. The level control by a level sensor can be achieved with level probes. This is an example of setup with a benchtop bioreactor using the level sensor to detect and control the foam. In this particular configuration, the foam control pump is tricking to control the level, connecting the tubing of the outlet stream in the direction from the bioreactor to the harvest potter. The limitations of the level probes are subject to false level detection when forming occurs within the bioreactor. For that reason, the precision can be less than the other system, like weight control, for example. Pumping out mechanisms. It's the concept is the concept of a slave pump for the bleeding pump, since the flow rate of the addition pump will configure the flow rate of this bleeding pump. This method is particularly useful for benchtop bioreactors or pilot bioreactors. Can be more expensive than with overflow or level sensor. Sign is necessary and advanced programming to reach this automation of the bleeding pump. This example is a solution we have developed using an external module for benchtop bioreactors for our equipment. This module consists of two pumps, one for fresh media addition and the second one to withdraw the culture. From the corresponding tool can be enabled and configured from our software. 
the medium pump could be configured as a slave pump according to the flow rate of the addition pump, which flow rate is controlled and regulated to maintain the target turbidity in the culture according to the control loop for the turbidostat in advanced mode. Bioreactor weight. To maintain a constant volume or weight, continuously measuring the overall system weight will be an accurate yet simple method. On a small scale, this generally means placing the bioreactor on a benchtop scale and for a large scale, using integrated load cells. Basically, the signal from the balance is used to control the pump for culture removal, still using the addition of fresh media with a pump controlled by the signal of the online optical density probe and target turbidity. This is a complete setup of a benchtop scale where the Turbidostat system has been established controlling the volume of the bioreactor with a pump, whose flow is regulated by a scale according to our bioreactor weight control system. As we can see in the results of the turbidity and weight of the culture during the time course of the fermentation process of this example, the variations are very low according to the set points of the turbidity and bioreactor weight, achieving a high degree of accuracy in the control for the continuous fermentation process. This comparative solves the advantages and disadvantages of each control according to the criteria. Cost. Sorry. Oops. Okay. So, okay. Returning to the criteria for the comparison according to the different level controls. So, would be cost, the feasibility of technical implementation, and the precision of the control. The low cost method will be the overflow control, but precision will be less compared with the other methods. In the opposite way, we can find the weight control or a bleeding pump configured with the same flow rate according to the addition pump, being the weight control the highest precision control. The control using a level sensor can be a low intermediate solution under the three criteria of comparison. All these solutions are valid technologies and not so high complexity and within reach according to different budgets. To summarize the advantages and disadvantages of a continuous process and the two start strategy, I will explain some considerations of the process. The advantages, in general, for the continuous processes, the productivity and growth rate can be optimized by changing the feed flow rate during production and for longer periods of productivity with less downtime. In theory, a continuous process can be operated for a very long time of the period. In the specific case of the Tubido Stat strategy, the growth of the culture is performed at the maximum specific growth rate of the microorganism because the nutrients are not limited in the media. Cells are in a constant physiological state, reaching a steady state. Most downstream processing works best in a continuous mode. This consideration is in general for the concept of an open system operating in a continuous mode. Besides, cleaning and suck down times are much less frequent. Regarding the disadvantages, as with the chemostat approach, the method may still be selected toward mutants with a growth rate higher than the observed by the parental strain, conducting in some cases the selection of a strain not desired. Not as efficient as a fed batch cultures in the production of secondary metabolites, which, pro which production is generally triggered at the end of the growth phase. But this limitation is general for the continuous process, but sometimes can be solved by applying some strategies like the multi-stage in cascade mode, like the type explained in the introduction section. Risk of contamination, but can be solved or minimize the risk with good equipment, good practice and high level of experience. Some continuous processes can have limitations by regulatory authorities for the production of pharmaceuticals because no there is batch lot accessibility. And finally, one consideration is that this technique is limited to unicellular organisms and in some particular cases is difficult for long-term cultures, 
largely because of the addition of organism to the surface of the sensor. But with the development of optical sensor, this problem with long-term monitoring of biomass may be partially overcome. Nevertheless, this strategy is still limited for pellet or hypha forming during fungal cultures. And finally, some conclusions. There are several strategies for a continuous fermentation process, and one of them is the turbidostat stat control, based on the maintenance of a constant biomass concentration. This strategy can be applied to maintain the specific growth rate at the maximum value available, and when high turbidity can be detrimental for some process, like photobioreactors in continuous mode. To control the turbidity of the culture optimally, one of the solutions is a fresh mediation pump controlled by the signal of an online optical density probe installed in the bioreactor. There are several ways to control the volume in the bioreactor in a continuous process, from several ranges of cost and precision, signs a simple overflow to a secondary pump working as a slave or a bioreactor weight control with a scale with a high precision level. Okay, so now you are welcome to make questions in the platform to which we will try to reply immediately or by email after. Uh, please remember leave your email when making a question. Um, if you want more information, you can visit and explore our knowledge hub where you will find related content about webinars, white papers, application notes, videos, and more. And again, thanks for attending this webinar. Glad of sharing this moment with you once again. I hope you find this webinar useful, and we wait for you in our social networks, Facebook, LinkedIn, our website, www.myonet.com. And here is an email if you want more information and we will be happy to help you with your idea or project related to the bioprocesses world. And on behalf of all my Bionic colleagues and Bionet, uh, thanks again. <laughs>